Bon Camino everyone, welcome to another video. It's uh, day number God only knows what of quarantine here. And um, I wanted to do something different today. Tomorrow is uh, the one year anniversary of starting the channel. And um, I was hoping to get to a thousand views, but I think I'm about like 60 short. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters at this point. And that's what I want to talk about. I'm kind of having this existential crisis going on which a lot of people are and uh trying to do different things to stay busy and stay active and i've been doing some of it but trying to catch up on some reading and i've just realized that the perfect quarantine self-isolation corona author is uh it's my second favorite author my favorite author is hp lovecraft hands down hp lovecraft is my favorite author but a close second is a guy that I knew about for a long time, but I actually didn't start reading him until college. And it was actually from college assignments that I had to get to know this author. And it is a guy that reminds me a lot of H.P. Lovecraft, Franz Kafka. It's not a big surprise if everyone knows about my love of Prague, my deep and abiding love of Prague. Prague is a dear little mother. She gets her claws into you and she never lets go. So said Kafka. So before the quarantine started, I was at a used bookstore uh, that's right down from where I work in the same like strip. And uh, I don't need to buy more books, but I just compelled to. I'm one of those people that has like a stack of like 10 books they need to read. And then they buy like four more. And then they read like two of those and then like buy four more. So it just now you've got a stack of like 16 and then it keeps growing. But this bookstore started to do these bundle deals where it's like, you know, get this book for $6 or get like four for 15. And it's like, uh, now I've got to find four books to add to my pile. And one of the books they had there was the aphorisms from Kafka, which is, you know, like it's tiny little volume. Of some collected writings of his aphorisms. And one of the other volumes they had there were his diaries. Now, as a historian, I like to read first person perspectives and primary sources on things. And I thought, okay, Kafka's diaries, like, it seems like this is something that I could be into, given what I know about Kafka's personality. He was a very antisocial, kind of isolated guy. He only had a few close friends, like, Max Brode, who became his uh, literary executor, was like his best friend during his life. And he had troubled relations with women, with his family. Um, he's a deeply intellectual guy who was kind of into his own mind and had difficulty just relating to people. He's my kind of guy. And then uh, nobody knew that this corona shutdown was happening at the time, but I got this book and a few other books, some Russian literature. And so my copy is right here. It's from the Shockin' Books, okay, which publishes of Kafka's works. Now, you can get Kafka's works from other places, you know, like Everyman Library, um, Penguin, Oxford, those kind of places. But Shockin' is like a press that was kind of dedicated to publishing all of Kafka's works, and they published not just, like, The Metamorphosis and other stories, but things like this, his diaries, um, things like um, the aphorisms that I mentioned before, also collected letters, like letters to Felice and letters to Melina and letters to the family. There's many volumes of his collected letters that have been put out by Shokin. Um, also, I think Max Brode's um, biography, Franz Kafka Life, was published by Shokin. And I actually have another Shokin book. Not that one. No. The Castle Definitive Edition. Now this, I will give a shout out to, um, is from a bookstore in Geneva, New York that does um, um, framing, where, so, where my cousin got um, his 
his um, collectible posters and things framed there. And they've actually moved around uh, a couple times, but they also have um, books. They also have like used and antique books. Sometimes they're kind of put into these art packages, and other times they're just by um, subject. And um, it's called the Stomping Grounds. So Stomping Grounds, which, of course, I think they're closed right now because of COVID, but I'm hoping that they'll reopen. There have been a small business, and I've done business with them before. Actually, at one point, I was thinking about buying these um, Mooka prints that they had, antique Mooka prints from, like, the 20s or 30s. They were really gorgeous. I think they had, like, four of them. Like, three of them matched, and one of them was, like, a outlier. While I was there, I just happened to see this... Uh, copy of the castle which i already have the trial i don't own a copy of america i've never read america so that's on my list of things but i got this copy not knowing that you know it was shocking i was just like oh this is an old one the translation is probably out of date but it was like three dollars and in fact i have my receipt right here it was $3.50 and then $0.14 cents state tax, $0.12 cents county tax, three seventy six. dollars And I bought this at the Stomping Grounds, 41 Seneca Street, Geneva. And I bought it from James H. Hi, James. At 4 o'clock on December the 9th, 2018. There you go. Just started reading it now. <laughs> so that's what I mean about being behind on books. But I kind of thought that I would just maybe have this kicking around and then I would replace it because the new Shocking Edition looks different. But then I realized this is a Shocking Edition. It's an old one, but it totally is from Shocking Books. This one was printed in 1974. Okay. And uh, the cover price on it is two forty five. So I paid a dollar five more in 2018 than I would have paid in 1974. This one that I got from the um, discount bookstore in Waterloo. Okay. The cover price on this, which was printed in 2011 physically, is $17. And you can see it's got the, usually there's a red or a black mark sometimes when they're going to discount these books. But the one thing I will say for Shock and Press is that even though the covers have been redesigned, the books are exactly the same dimension, and the uh, the font is exactly the same dimension. Some of the other things have changed, but putting these on the shelf together, even though one edition is from 74 and the other edition is from 2011, it's very, very exact. It's very, very aesthetically pleasing. So I'm in the process of reading The Castle right now, but my first, my first delve into self-isolation with Kafka was reading the diaries. I've got to say, this is nearly like perfect reading for like the melancholy of like isolation in our times right now. Kafka is just perfect. These diaries start in 1910. They go to 1923 and he died in 24. Okay. He was, so this covers like his late twenties and most of his thirties. So time periods I can relate to. Uh, it's as compelling as his short story work. It really is. In the diaries, you don't just find journal entries and what happened on those days. You find literary fragments of stories, starts of chapters, things that he was thinking about working on, observations about people, um, mixed in with a few uh, very personal things, and then more things that are like, oh, I went to the cinema, I went to a play, I did X, Y, Z, I did this, I did that. I spent time with Max, I wrote to F, which is Felice, his fiance, twice over, his first fiance. He was engaged, he was engaged three times. He was engaged twice to, to Felice and then once to this other woman that I don't think he ever really intended to marry. And a lot of the book, a lot of the best parts of the book are about his struggles with Felice and his thoughts on, on marrying her or not marrying her. Um, two problems that I had with the diaries. One is there's these things called the travel diaries, which are obviously like the journals that he took with him on his travels when he was writing. Um, and Max Brode, I don't know how much you guys know about this subject, so I'll enlighten you a little bit on it and be repetitive if you know a lot about 
Kafka, but Max Brod was his best friend and was supposed to burn his papers when he died. That was his literary wish. And famously, Max Brod did not. And then Max Brod became like the guy who really advocated publishing all of these things, became his literary executor, and, and really that's when Kafka became famous. I hate to make this comparison, but in some ways it's kind of like what August Derleth did for H.P. Lovecraft. Two problems I have with what Max did in this book. One, he took the travel diaries and put them, which are quite kind of lengthy, in an appendix instead of just putting them in context of the book. So you read through 1910, and some of these um, travel journals were earlier in the book. They should be in the 1910 to 1912 sections. Would have rather that they were there. Instead, you get to the end, you read to the end of his life, and then you read them as an... It doesn't make sense. And from 1917 to 1919, he didn't keep a journal in the traditional sense. He stopped using the type of notebooks he was using in the kind of personal journals, but he kept writing somewhat different format of journals in these smaller notebooks called the Blue Octavo notebooks. And Max just felt that they didn't belong in the diary, so he just cut them out. So there's a big gap. The material from the Blue Octavo notebooks is not included in here, not even in an appendix, anything. Uh, and I just think that was a stupid move. So then, of course, I had to go on Amazon and order the Blue Octavo Notebooks. Now, I've got to say, this book is not published by Shockin. It's published by Exact Change, but under a deal with Shockin. Um, and this was published in 1991 as its own edition. You could find it in other places um, that were... Um, published like Dearest Father Stories and other writings by Shotkin and um, the aphorisms, a lot of the aphorisms come from these Blue Octavo notebooks. So this this is not one, it's very small. I think it's 107 pages. Yes, it's 107 pages altogether. I think I paid like more for this than I did these other two books combined because I think I paid like $4 for this and like $4 for this is like $8. I think I paid like Twelve to fourteen dollars for this tiny book. It's aesthetically beautiful, though. I love the cover of this blue house. And if you open it, there's this beautiful blue color. Like it's almost like construction paper. And I'm thinking maybe this is the color of the blue octavo notebooks because he said they were something like vocabulary books. So I do really love this book visually. It does not fit exactly. You can see with the shock in books, though it's it's a bit longer. It's obviously thinner, and on top it doesn't it doesn't angle all, almost 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 perfect that way. But clearly there's a huge overlap there, so it's going to stick out. So these two books here kind of make the complete diaries. If you have this, you would probably have like eighty percent of his diaries. And then this is like the other twenty percent that Max Bro didn't want in situ, so it should insert itself in here like that. I would love an edition of the diaries. They had the travel diaries and the Blue Octavo notebooks in situ. That's not what we're going to get. That's not how Max edited it. So if you get the diaries, it's a tremendous read. It's the life of a tortured artist. So if that's your kind of thing, my God, it's perfect. It's also somebody that feels a lot of isolation, a lot of social isolation. And I think in this time period of COVID-19, this is so relatable to see into the mind of Kafka, who was this genius. Blue Octavo notebooks, there's a lot of repetition in this. It's not personal journals. It's the notes and things that he kept in the time period that he wasn't writing a lot of personal journals. I don't find it that different of writing, and I would have liked to find the two of them combined, but this book is far better investment and something that you would really want to read. This one is for, more for the Kafka completists, but I think I find it beautiful. Everything from how the book came to be, to the aesthetic version of this book, to um, the more religious and theological writings that he's doing here, and the aphorisms. Um, but these are my two books that I've read at the beginning of my isolation with Kafka, and I think that Kafka is your perfect literary companion for the quarantine. And uh, if anybody sees this and is also reading Kafka, during the time of COVID-19 or has any other um, like reactions, please uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment because I'm going to
be reading more. I'm going through the castle, and I'm going to be writing about that soon. Uh, and I'm going to record another video, so stay tuned for more Kafka in isolation.